Hey y'all, and welcome back to Coding with Minmer. On today's agenda, we're going to tackle LECO problem 426, convert binary search tree to a sorted circular doubly linked list. After that, we'll go over an actual variant of the original question that Meta asks. For this one in particular, it's best to fully understand the OG problem, because it'll test whether you can solve the variant in an interview setting. Let's start. What we need to do is convert a binary search tree to a sorted circular doubly linked list. Furthermore, we have to do it in place. This is a key word. Overall, this sentence single-handedly defines our task, but we have a few questions. Number one, what is a binary search tree? Well, looking at our example here, it's a type of tree where the left subtree of any given node, take the root node of four, is lower in value. Inversely, the right subtree is greater in value. This property is true for every single node. Let's do one more example. On node 2, its left subtree is lower in value, namely the 1. And its right subtree is higher in value, namely the 3. An interesting observation is that the current node of 2 has a value smack down the middle between the two. If for some bizarre reason we wanted to traverse this BST in ascending order, we'd first visit the left subtree, the current node, and then lastly the right subtree. Next up, what is a sorted circular doubly linked list? Let's calm down with the big words and start in its simplest form, a singly linked list. What makes it doubly? This is not a trick question, it's a singly linked list that has pointers going both ways. We now have a doubly linked list, but we're also told it's sorted from the lowest integer to the greatest one. Lastly, this data structure must be circular, meaning we have a pointer from the head node all the way to the very last node, and from the very last node to the head node. To accomplish this, we'd obviously need a reference to both the first and last nodes. We'll keep this in mind. I'm very forgetful, but what was our task again? Well, looking at our problem description here, everything is a mishmash of confusing text. Ignorance is bliss, so we'll ignore it, but allow me to summarize. We need to convert this binary search tree into this sorted circular doubly linked list. Not only that, but we have a constraint in which we must do this in place. So without the help of any external data structures. For reference, I'll be drawing all of these input nodes as nodes down here, just to make it a bit easier to follow along. But yes, just note that it refers to the same exact node. To play devil's advocate, I can rewire pointers in the tree diagram itself, but immediately if I do this, I can already tell it devolve into a big spaghetti mess. Anyway, after our transformation, we're instructed to return the pointer to the smallest element of the linked list or more generally, our established head pointer here. This is our answer, this is what we'd return. All of that makes sense, but what's the intuition here? Let's think about it. We're given a binary tree, so we're already confined to algorithms as it pertains to trees, three of which are the most applicable. First up, there's pre-order CLR, where on any given node, take node two, we must process the current node before recursing down to the left subtree, and then on the backtrack of that, going down the right subtree. Secondly, there is in order LCR, where on any given node, reusing node two, we go down to the left subtree first before backtracking to process the current node, and then finally recursing down the right subtree. It's different, but ever so slightly. Lastly, there's post order LRC, where on the same node, for example's sake, we go down the left subtree, but then go down the right thereafter, and on the backtrack, process the current node. No matter which one we pick, observe that at one point or another, we're required to process the left subtree, right subtree, and the current node. We most likely have to utilize one of these tree traversal algorithms, but we're not sure which one yet. So let's do a Minmer Classic and YOLO our example here. Really, what we're doing is reverse engineering, but terminology correctness is not a thing here. It's a safe space. Anyway, we immediately observe that the leftmost node of one should be the head of our resulting linked list, right? Thus, from the root node, let's choose to go to the left. At node two, we're getting warmer, so let's go to the left again. 
We did it, we landed at node 1. But sadly, with recursion, we can't really stop until we hit a base case of some sort. We don't have a choice but to keep iterating to the left, where luckily, we conveniently hit a base case. There is no node here, so we'll return back immediately, where the very next thing we'd love to do is process this current node. The first time we process a node is incidentally the lowest valued one, and thus our head node. So let's assign a variable to it and call it head. Great. Back to our DFS here. Recall I did say that regardless of tree traversal algorithm, we must process the left subtree, current node, and finally the right subtree. We don't have another option. Let's go to the right where there is a null pointer, which just tells us to go back. There are no more nodes to process. We're done with node one entirely. So we backtrack up to the parent node of two. Incidentally, this is the next node we'd like to process which I suppose it just means we note it down and do nothing else. Kind of awkward, but we're hoping something comes out of this. Following our order of operations, we recurse to the right subtree where we find node three. I'm not sure if this is pure luck or we're accidental geniuses, but this is the next incremental node we needed to visit. We'll go to its left subtree, realize there's nothing there, process the current node, let's jot that down. Before going down the right subtree, it's another base case. We don't have a node, so we backtrack. This is getting redundant. Let's quickly go through the rest of this. And we are finished. What did we notice? Well, if we bring back the policies of each tree traversal algorithm, we realize that we dispatch an in order tree traversal. That's the algorithm of choice, and indeed, it's the correct one. To make myself perfectly redundant, on any given node, take node 2 for the 10th time, we recurse down to its left subtree, where the lower values exist, and thus should be prioritized. After that, we backtrack and visit the current node, whose value is in the middle of both subtrees, and would be the very next one to visit. After that, we go down the right subtree of all the greater values. This is the exact order we wanted, in ascending order for our doubly linked list. There is just one problem. Although we visited all the linked list nodes in the right order, we didn't create the two-way pointers. Let's rewind several iterations and see what logic we're missing. We rewind until we hit the iteration where we process node 2 by redrawing its doppelganger node down here. Ideally, we'd still like to have a reference to its previous node of node 1. Because remember, we learned that with in-order traversal, we visit nodes in increasing order. And if we always have references to the node before, we would have the exact two nodes we need to set the pointers between the two, from the 2 to 1 and 1 to 2. And extending this idea, 3 to 2, 4 to 3, and lastly, 5 to its previous node, 4. It only makes sense then that the previous reference should start on the very first node processed. We're mighty software engineers, what's stopping us from having another variable to the previous node? Let's rewind one more iteration to the first node we had processed. Here we took note of node 1, assigned it the head node, on top of this, let's assign another variable to it called p, short for previous. Again, both these are the same nodes. p refers to both of them. Okay, now we have all the context we need to finish this walkthrough. Remember what we did from here. We went to the right subtree, encountered a null pointer, and returned from there, where we backtrack some more to its parent node, node 2. Here, visiting node 2, let's note it down. And now we have both references that we need to set the edge both ways from node 2 to 1 and 1 to 2. Are we done with this iteration yet? Almost. Going through the motions again, we realize that when we get to the next incremental valued node of 3, we need a previous reference to the literal previous node of 2. Meaning each time we process a node, the C and LCR will reassign our previous pointer to it. Okay, amazing. What do we do next? We go down the right subtree where we land on node 3, go to its left, nothing there, process the current node, which means setting the current node to its previous one, node 2, 
and oppositely from node to the previous to the current. Last thing we'll do is reassign previous to the current node and move on. We go down its right subtree where there is nothing, so we backtrack to node 2 and backtrack some more to node 4. Where we process node 4, we have a current node of 4 and a previous node of 3, it's everything we need, let's set both those pointers. After that, it's easy to forget, but reassign P to the current node and we'll make our way to the right subtree. At node 5, we go to the left, but there's nothing there, so we backtrack, we'll visit the current node where we'll set a pointer from 5 to 4, and 4 to 5. After that, we'll reassign previous to 5, go down its right subtree, encounter a null pointer, and backtrack all the way to node 4, where we are now officially done. That's the logic of our entire recursive function. Here's our answer, but something's not quite right. It turns out we don't have a two-way edge from the first node to the last node, and lastly, from the last node to the first node. I mean, we're halfway there, since we already have one of the two nodes required. But what about the very last node process of 5? Turns out, it's our lucky day, our previous pointer points to the exact node that we need. P refers to node 5. We won't hesitate then to set a pointer from the previous pointer to our head pointer, and inversely, head pointer to the previous pointer. Alright, now we're done. This is our answer, this is what we return. We should be proud, we basically deduced that in order traversal visits nodes in a binary search tree from the lowest value to the highest value. Please be aware of a silly edge case. You could be given a null pointer as the root node. In these cases, we'll just return a null pointer right back, and that is it. The time complexity is big O n, where n is the number of nodes and the space complexity is big O n as well. This might seem puzzling, although we didn't use any external data structures, this is because of recursive stack frames we'd accrue in our DFS function. And in the worst case, if we just had a linked list as a binary search tree, we'd accrue one, two, three stack frames, which is equal to an n of three nodes. Cool. With this context, we're ready to smash our heads against our keyboards until we come up with a code solution. Let's start. First things first, let's take care of the edge case I just mentioned, where if the input root node is null pointer, we'll simply chuck a null pointer right back. After that, let's initialize all the pointers we needed in our walkthrough. Number one, the previous pointer, P for previous, as well as the head pointer. Don't worry, these two variables will be initialized in our DFS function. Speaking of which, let's invoke our recursive function and pass in the three pointers we need. All right, now let's implement it. We call it DFS, and I took in the current node, let's call it C, the previous node of P, and lastly, the head node. In this function, what was our only base case? Well, if our current node is ever at a null pointer, we know to return and backtrack. Otherwise, we'll aggressively recurse to the left subtree. And on the backtrack, process the current node. Now, if this was the first time we process a node, which we know is true if our previous pointer is null pointer, then it must be the head node. Let's set it as such. Remember, we did one more thing. We set the previous node to this current node to set us up for success in the future iterations. Otherwise, if this wasn't the first time we process a node and our previous pointer was not null pointer, we can set the two-way edge. Specifically, the right pointer of our previous node to the current node and oppositely, the left pointer of the current node to the previous node. And of course, as always, we'll set the previous pointer to the current node. I smell code duplication, so let's very quickly extract this setter right here, as well as this one. After we process the current node, we'll recurse down the current node's right subtree, passing in the same parameters. After our DFS function is done, Recall, we have to manually set an edge from the head node to the previous node, and oppositely from the previous node to the head node. One last thing, we'll return our head node as the answer. And that's the implementation. The variance is laughable, meta tries to trick us, but as we'll see, to no avail. 
This variance is very deceptive because Meta rephrases the whole problem statement and removes all traces of a binary search tree. Check it here, it's now an ordinary binary tree. And taking a look at our example, it's stripped of its cool binary search tree properties, where there is no relation of one node's integer to another. As a concrete example, this node of 1 here is lower in value than its parent of node 3, violating the BSD property. That said, despite the different type of input tree we're given, Meta will explicitly spell out that they want a transformed, circular doubly linked list according to the tree's in-order traversal. Thus, given this tree here, this is what the result would look like. Okay, here it is. The other important thing to note is that this linked list is no longer sorted by increasing integer value, and that's perfectly fine. Glancing at the problem description, there's no mention of a sorted circular doubly linked list. It's just one that manifests an in-order traversal of our tree. With all this in mind, we ask one grand question. Do any of these requirements matter? Does our code change at all? To which I say no. We can literally reuse the same exact algorithm from before. This whole variant was a roundabout way of asking the original leak code problem. It was just presented differently. Therefore, I can confidently say that this is our answer, this is what we return. There's no code changes, but for tradition's sake, let's stare blankly at the unchanged code for 5 seconds. Alright, like I said, nothing changes, I promised. I hope this clarification saves some on-site loops, but other than that, I wish you luck on your interviews. And if you learned something today, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.